Hello, my name is Robert Delf. I'm an entomologist, and today I'm going to talk to you about the many different collecting techniques for insects. We're going to be using several uh, trap methods and some general collecting methods that I'm going to teach you today. The general collecting methods we're going to be going over are using aerials, aerial nets uh, for catching butterflies, dragonflies, uh, bees, and other flying insects at, uh, off of vegetation and in the air. Uh, then we're also going to talk about sweep nets and how to use quantitative sweeps on vegetation uh, for collecting insects off of vegetation. And then some of the trap methods that we're going to use are malaise traps for catching diurnal flying insects. Then we're going to use pitfall traps for catching ground dwelling terrestrial insects. Then later on in the evening we're going to use light traps for collecting nocturnal flying insects. This is, these are all going to be at a riparian system here at Wet Beaver Creek. And the Wet Beaver Creek is an ideal collecting spot for insects since it's a riparian system that borders pinyon juniper woodlands. And in this riparian system, it's dominated uh, by cottonwoods, elm, and Arizona sycamore. Anytime you're at a riparian system, these are the best places to collect insects since you have uh, both aquatic and terrestrial insects right near each other. The first type of general collecting I'm going to show you is the use of an aerial net. An aerial net such as, like, such as this is ideal for collecting. It's a fold-out net that's collapsible. And so you can put it in your pocket and you could use your pole as a walking stick and then when uh, when you see a butterfly or insect that you want to capture you could take your aerial net out of your pocket fold it out connect it and these nets are great because you can connect other pieces to them making them really tall if you see an insect on a flower or a plant then you use an aerial net for sweeping at the insect and then you move it like this to disorient them and then you quickly grab the end of your net. This way the insect is at the end of the net. If you capture your specimen and then look to see what you've got, it's going to fly out of your net. So it's real important that when you see an insect, you catch it, kind of do this, to disorient them and also the pressure pulls the specimen at the end of the net here. Then you close it with your hands. And you take a kill jar and your specimen is going to be flapping around. You don't want it to get damaged. So you can take the specimen and close it in the kill jar like this with your net exposed and for a couple of minutes and then the specimen dies and then you can reach in and grab the specimen out and put it in your kill jar. Now with collecting some insects off of vegetation, uh, such as leaf hoppers, mantises, grasshoppers, uh, it's good to use a sweep net. A sweep net is a little bit more sturdier, it's stronger. If you use an aerial net for rubbing against vegetation, the fine fabric on the net could get tear get torn by uh, sharp sticks, uh, etc. So if you use a net like this, you vigorously rub it into vegetation, sweep the vegetation with your net, and it's the same principle. You disorient the insects and grab the end of your net. And so then all the specimens are going to be in this area of your sweep net. Then you take a Ziploc bag you're going to invert the net into the Ziploc bag. You can hold it with your chin and then you invert the net, shake it, and then all the specimens will be in your Ziploc bag and then you seal that up. And Then you could take this bag, put it in the freezer for euthanizing them, or you can drop the lid of the kill jar in here and that will euthanize the insects as well. When you're doing vegetation sweeps, if you don't collect any of the plant material, then you won't be able to identify what it came from. So it's always a good idea 
to at least put a little bit of the plant material, both the flowers and leaves, in the, zip, in the bag with your sample. This is a hybrid net. This is both a sweet net and an aerial net because at the very end of the net you have the fine fabric that you have that you use with an aerial net. I recommend getting one of these nets. It's a hybrid. That way you don't have to carry a sweep net and an aerial net. Because if you see a very sensitive, in, a very delicate insect like a butterfly or dragonfly, you can still use your net as an your hybrid net as an aerial net. And then you have the specimen. You can see it through the clear part of the net and put that in the kill jar or in a Ziploc bag. And if you're using it as a regular sweep net, you still have the fine mesh, or the, the very strong fabric on the edge of the rim here, so you don't damage this part of the net uh, by rubbing it against uh, hard vegetation. So you can still use it as a sweet net against vegetation, and the only sensitive part on the net is the fabric at the end, which is not going to be uh, touching the vegetation much. And you can still see what you've got in your net, and then invert that into a Ziploc bag. And then I have my specimens and a little bit of plant material at the end of this net and I can see that I got stuff. I take a Ziploc bag and I'm going to invert the net into the Ziploc bag. When I invert it, I also make sure to shake it. And then I have plant material. So I could identify, I could definitely tell that this is mesquite. And then there's um, a lot of insects in this bag as well. And then I could take this bag and put it in the freezer to euthanize the insects. If you're in an area where the plants, you don't want to damage the plants, doing uh, sweeps, vegetation sweeps, can be kind of destructive to the plant. You can also do uh, vegetation, you could shake the vegetation into the net as well. So you could take a bushel of the vegetation and you stick it in the net and shake it vigorously into the net and then you also have specimens in there that you can invert into the into your Ziploc bag okay so I'll just use my chin to hold it open the bag when I invert the net I go all the way to the very end and shake the net. And then there are, there's my sample. So I have a little bit of plant material and specimens in there for identification. This is an aquatic net and you would use this in streams or in ponds and uh, you could use this for just general collection of specimens in a pond. Uh, or you can use quantitative sweeping in an aquatic system, such as a stream. You have this fine mesh at the end here. You take the net, put it into the stream, and you're kind of sweeping the water, barely touching the bottom of the ground to get aquatic insects into this net. And it's the same thing if you just lift this, if you just uh, take this net out of the water, you can still have aquatic insects jump out. So when you have the, spe when you have the net in the water, you still want to vigorously sweep the net in the water so you're getting all the specimens at the back of this part. Then you can take it out, invert this into a bucket of water or some other container, and then you have your aquatic insects in there.